Hi, I'm Chuck Sullivan, and I want to welcome you to my little private dojo. You may recognize this set because this is where Vic and I shot our original video series, our training tapes. And this is where we also spent two years of our lives figuring out exactly how we wanted to present our program. The whole syllabus happened right here. Anyway, these days, it's just my little private dojo. And uh, I have a group invited to come down every Monday night, whoever shows up. Is that's the group. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's 24. I never know how many people are going to show up or who they're going to be or from what era or whatever. And last Monday night, it was kind of interesting because we only had seven people. And I said, you know what? Let's just have some fun. Let's do something we haven't done for a long time. We'll get out the three dummy stand and we'll set up the dummies and we'll just, we'll just wail on them. In fact, we haven't done it in so long that two of the people that are here never did it. They've just never done it before. I had to describe it to them, tell them what they were going to be doing, and uh, then they just did it. I feel that it's very, very, very important to hit something with targets that you can see if you're hitting them or not, and to get resistance while you're hitting. Now, a heavy bag is, I don't care for it at all. If it's all you got, well, God bless you and, and have fun, but it, it just it absorbs your energy differently, it buckles, it bucks, it turns, it twists, it twirls. Uh, there are no targets, it's just one big cylinder, and it's what it is, but it's pretty bad for our purposes. So when you've got the three dummies set up, and you can pretty well see what, uh, what, the, what it is they're hitting and how they're hitting it and what kind of force is going into it. The other important thing about hitting something that's got resistance is the fact that when you first start doing it, you'd be surprised at how when you practice in the air, boy, you can go like the wind. You can just go like crazy. But as soon as you hit something, it slows you down. And if you're not used to that, if you're not accustomed to that, and you get on the street and you've been going like the wind in the air and all of a sudden you hit something and it slows you down and you're thinking to yourself, my God, this isn't the same as, as in the dojo. Your mind is, is off business. You just lost it as far as I'm concerned. I don't want anybody thinking anything when, the, when it hits the fan than targets. Also, some of the people here started warming up, and I said, whoa, stop, 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 stop. Don't warm up. They said, really? Don't warm up? What do you mean don't warm up? I said, do not warm up. Because when you're driving in your car and all of a sudden something happens, you've got to get out and wail, you're not warmed up. When you're walking down the street and somebody blindsides you, you're not warmed up. When you're someplace strange or whatever and somebody comes up behind you and, and grabs you and put, starts to put you in a lock, you're not warmed up. And you better be able to go from dead still to 100 miles an hour in about one and a half seconds flat. Because if you can't do that, <laughs> it just doesn't work. Then you wonder why, hey, this stuff doesn't work. Well, yeah, it does. But you have to train for it. All right, so I'm going to show these, these people to you in, uh, by, according to rank. I'm going to start with Marco Placido. He's a brown belt with us. And uh, he's knocking on the door to black. And after him comes Lorraine Posaba. Lorraine is only about four foot ten. And you'll notice when she hits the tallest of the dummies, she has to stand on her toes just to get her hands up high enough. So Lorraine does a lot of low kicks, which is perfect for somebody of her stature. After her <coughs> is Hugo Garcia. Hugo's a 6'3 black belt. He's been around for a long, long time. And Hugo is the biggest little man I know or have ever known. He's not a whole lot taller than Lorraine, but he's a whole different entity. And he's a six degree black belt. Lorraine just got her black belt. Just got it. All right, after Hugo comes Jeff Salzman. Jeff has been around forever today, and he's a six degree black belt as well. And Jeff also runs marathons. So Jeff has probably got the best cardio of anybody I know. I mean, he can just go and go and go and go. And he doesn't break a sweat, and he doesn't, he doesn't huff and puff. <laughs> Wonderful. After Jeff comes Chuck Boyd. Chuck was with us back in the 60s with Ed Parker and myself when we were partners on a dojo. Chuck is on the Ed Parker family tree as one of the first-generation black belts. <clears throat> we numbered, they numbered 15. We had 15 black belts come out of that dojo between Mr. Parker and myself, and uh, Chuck is one of them. After we closed the dojo... Um, everybody just kind of split it off and, you know, went their own way and, and so on. And um, 
we hadn't seen Chuck for, oh, I got 25, 30 years or more, maybe more. And all of a sudden, he found out where we were at, and he said, I didn't know you guys were still Can I come down? I said, you bet you can come down. You better come down now. And he's been coming down, and it's great. It's just great to have some of this old talent back again. Chuck has learned some marvelous things in the interim, but he never changed his base. His base has always been Capo. That's the way he teaches it, and that's the way he does it. And I'm so pleased because that's what our little group does. We've, we've never had to go elsewhere. We got our Kempo, then you go do anything you want. So, after Chuck comes, uh, Chuck is the ninth degree, by the way. So, like I said, it's 30 some years I haven't even seen him. Then comes Vic and I. Um, I'm not going to say anything about Vic and I because you're going to see it and uh, you'll see it. Uh, we just, we did, we haven't done this in a long time either, but we've done it before. So, uh, you just kind of take a look and see what you think. First up is Marco Placido. Next is Little Lorraine Pasama. Now watch how she has to really just jump up there in order to get to him. Here comes Hugo Garcia. He gets to him no matter how tall they are. Next up, Jeff Salzman. Here comes Chuck Boyd. You know, I forgot to tell him that he could stop anytime he wanted to, so he just looked like he was going to go all night, so I finally had a signal him. Make way for Vic LaRue. Watching it as much as we did doing it. Thanks for watching.